Plaster of Paris is a great casting material to use in composing mold or reusable mold making materials. Here we're going to show you the process of making a mold using composite mold, some water, plaster, bubble buster, plaster additive, and vegetable oil mold release, and your original shape. The original shape that we're using is a plastic football from a football trophy. You could use lots of other shapes as well. This is just a good example of one that I had around. Because of the bolt on the bottom of the football, I needed to make a special mold box to hold this trophy in. So I cut a hole in a plastic cup and I made a little platform to hold it in place. For other objects, just place it into any container that can work as a mold box and pour the composite mold around it. If it's going to float, add a little bit of hot glue to hold it to the bottom or pour a little bit of composite mold to hold it in place and let that cool and then add more composite mold on top of it. Here we're adding a little bit of bubble buster to reduce the surface tension so the bubbles don't stick on the part when we pour on the composite mold. Now we've melted the composite mold in the microwave. We've done a little bit at a time, so we did it for about a minute and a half, and we poured that, and then we're gonna melt some more, and we're gonna pour that onto it, and we're gonna fill up over and around this trophy that we have. You can combine composite mold together, so if you have one that's a solid and one that's not, you can keep on adding to it. Let this composite mold cool to solidify. If you have a refrigerator or a freezer, you can put it in there to cool faster and then remove it from your mold box. I use a little plastic container, so I'm just gonna cut it around after I take off the bolt that's on the bottom. Composite mold is a reusable mold making material. So after I make this mold and I make this casting, I can remelt it and reuse it as many times as you want. If it gets dirty, I can just filter it through any cheesecloth to get rid of the bigger particles into it. And I can continue and remelt it and reuse it. So now I've removed the mold from the mold box and I am adding a parting line to the back of this shape so that I can remove the plaster of Paris casting from it when I'm finished. I add this parting line because plaster of Paris is a somewhat brittle casting material so that parting line helps make it easier to remove the shape after I've cast it. Now the mold looks good at this point and we're ready to go. If I didn't like it, I could remelt it and make that mold again. Here we're using vegetable oil as a mold release. That works fine, you can use baby oil. Don't be tricked into using anything fancy for a mold release. The vegetable oil or mineral oil work fine. To use the mold release, just pour it in, wipe it around, and get rid of any extra that you have in the mold. Notice the flexibility of the composite mold at this point. It makes it very easy to remove it around the casting that you've created. Now we need to make the plaster of Paris. I'm using a touch of plaster additive to the plaster to make it stronger and cure faster in the composite mold mold. This makes a stronger surface on the plaster. You'll see I'm just doing this by eye, but you want to be about 70% plaster to 30% water by weight, and you want to add about 3% of the plaster additive to this to make a strong, hard plaster casting. The less water you put in the mixture, compared to the amount of plaster, the stronger your part will be. The mixture will be similar to a thick pancake mix when you're ready to go. I also recommend using cold water in your plaster mixture to give yourself a little bit more time in the curing. You'll have about five-ish minutes to work with this plaster mixture. Plaster, composite stone, or cement, or quick creek type concretes make great casting materials in composite mold because of the low cost and good results. So now we mix the plaster and we're ready to pour it into our composite mold mold. Because I cut the parting line in the composite mold mold, I need to hold the two parts of the mold together. I'm using a little Velcro strip, but a rubber band or even better, a tape will work to hold this parting line together. Pour in the plaster into the mold and then I want to tap and shake the mold to make sure that all the crevices are filled up as much as possible. Because I was eyeballing how much plaster I needed, you'll see that I'm going to have to make some more plaster and pour it into the mold. And that works fine, especially if the initial plaster that's in the mold hasn't cured first. The two plasters will mix together and it'll be fine. It looks like a little bit of the plaster is running out of the hole that I made with the parting line. So first I'm going to move my Velcro strip down a little bit and then I also put some tape on this covering the hole to make sure that it doesn't come out while it's curing. So here I'm making a little bit more plaster to combine with it and add a little bit more of the plaster additive to combine with the initial plaster that's in there. The transparency of the composite mold is also helpful to allow me to know when that mold is filled. 
I can see the crevices and I can see the spots that need more plaster. Tapping helps fill up any of the voids that are in there. And it looks like a little bit more is running out of the potting line, so I'm adding a little bit of tape to the surface to hold that in place. The composite mold, reusable mold making material, also works well with many other casting materials. Some you might like include low melt waxes, soaps, epoxies, polyurethane castings, polyester, epoxy clays, crayon, etc. Now I let the plaster Paris cure for approximately an hour. Because the plaster additive is in there, it cures faster than it would normally. Now I gently remove the casting from the composite mold mold. This is where the flexibility of the composite mold is nice because I can peel the composite mold up and away from the casting to make it easier to pull out without causing any undue stress on the original shape. And here we go. Here is our football structure that we duplicated from the original trophy. You can do lots and lots of other shapes, or you can duplicate this shape multiple times in the same composite mold mold. The number of times we could reuse this mold is probably five to 10 times before the mold has to be remelted and reformed. And the nice part is you can use the same composite mold to make a new mold anytime you want. And here is the plaster casting as it comes out of the mold. And just so I can have duplicates, I'm going to make another football using the same mold. I'm putting a little bit of tape on it before it starts to leak out of the hole this time. Composite mold is also food contact safe when it is new. But don't use the composite mold for chocolates or fondants after you made a plaster or resin casting. That would be bad. If I want to keep this mold after I've made these castings, I want to add a little bit of vegetable oil to the mold and then store it in a cool, dry place. And whenever I'm ready, I can reuse that mold for the shape that's in, or I can remelt it to make another shape. We haven't found any expiration date on the composite mold. We have composite mold from well over 10 years ago that's working fine. And we also haven't found any limits to the number of times it can be remelted and reused. Just be careful that when you remelt it, that you don't overheat it and boil the material because that will degrade it over time. If the composite mold gets dirty from the resin or pieces of plaster that are still stuck in the material, just filter it through a cheesecloth. So you would melt the composite mold and then pour it through the cheesecloth. And back to the video, we are making some more plaster Paris to add to our mold. This time I think I made enough plaster to fill the mold. The first time. On the Composite Mold website, we have some ebooks that are available for download. We also have a whole bunch of videos that are available. If you'd like to see a particular video, let us know in the comments or just email us and we'll do our best to show you what and how the Composite Mold works. And now we've added the plaster to the mold. We've shaken the mold a little bit so that all the cavities can be filled. Look for anything that's empty in the mold and we let that cure to solidify. Because I added the plaster additive to the plaster, it'll cure to solid enough to remove from the mold in approximately 45 minutes to an hour. And then I want to let it set overnight to get even firmer. Three reasons why composite mold makes a great casting material for you include one, it's reusable so you can make it. Three reasons why composite mold makes a great casting material for you is one, it's reusable, two, lower cost and three it allows you to experiment and make molds anytime that you want without having to buy more mold making material for the person who's just starting out in the mold making process composite mold lets you create without any worry and without wasting materials for the advanced mold maker composite mold and our other mold making material impressive putty lets you customize your creations as anytime that you'd like and here is our second casting that we made of the football trophy. So to summarize the mold making process with composite mold, first place your original shape in a mold box, spray this with bubble buster to reduce surface tension, melt the composite mold and cover your part with the composite mold, then let this cool to solidify and remove from your mold box. And to cast with the plaster of Paris, first wipe your mold with mold release, 
mix the plaster, plaster additive in water together and a 70% plaster, 3% additive and 27% water by weight, possibly. Pour this into your mold and let this cure. We spray painted these shapes to make them look more like footballs and there is our final cast. Now the composite mold can be remelted and reused. If you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you.